Welcome to the Monday Monologue. Well, today we're going to talk about transformers that we use on our tube gear and where to get them. And that's one of the biggest struggles I have is trying to get quality power and output transformers for my project at a reasonable price. And they're never going to be really cheap. And if you are paying super budget prices, they're probably not very good quality. But then the problem becomes the balance of quality versus price. And like the Hashimoto makes a really nice output transformer. I'm sure their power transformers are really nice too. I've never used those, but I have used their output transformers. They're nice, but they're pricey. The other thing that I really haven't dove into is using like new old stock transformers. It just kind of scares me a little bit when I see them and the wiring is like that old cloth type and it's all deteriorated and stuff. It just kind of looks scary to me. And we don't know what kind of life those products have had, whether people have possibly run them with no speakers and had signal going through them and cranked up and they're all shorted out inside, fixing the arc. And we don't know how many hours are on used power transformers. So we're going to take that off the table for now. And I am going to say I have been really happy, or at least pretty happy, with these EdCore output transformers. I've used them in quite a few projects. They seem to work good. They seem to be have a nice round kind of sound to them. And overall, I've been pleased with them. Use their chokes. They seem to work fairly well. The main problem with the EdCore products is nothing is in stock. Everything's special, made to order, and it takes weeks and weeks to get them, and the shipping costs are high, which I understand the shipping costs being high. A lot of times when you're paying like $20 to ship a 20-pound package, that's not the real cost, and it's getting subsidized with other people paying more to pay like and mouths are like $8 to ship to two resistors, so they kind of balance that stuff out. So the main problem I've had with EdCore is their power transformers, and especially with this power transformer that I used on my 300B amp. From the day I plugged it in, it was noisy and had a hum in it, and I tried everything to quiet it down. I've heard people say, you know, stick popsicle sticks in here between the windings and the laminates. That didn't do anything. I put that beautiful silencing, deadening stuff on the end bells. That helped a little bit. At the end of the day, I ended up mounting it in these little, I don't know if you can see them here, but these little rubber stands. And that made it where at least you didn't hear from across the room. But then in less than a year, this amp started blowing fuses and this monster transformer is dead. And it was expensive. And now throwing that thing in the trash can. So that's obviously not ideal. And then there's a Hammond that is the same voltage. And you can see it's a much more compact transformer. Now it is missing one winding that that transformer had that I'm going to have to replace with another 6.3 volt transformer inside the chassis. But I've already hooked this thing up to 120 volts and it's quiet. And I've been using Hammond power transformers for a lot of my products and almost invariably they're quiet. They put out slightly more voltage than they're rated at, but they run nice and cool and I've had no problems with them. The problem I have with the Hammond output transformers is they have these little tiny ones and then they have these big monster ones, and there's really nothing in between. They don't have like 10 and 15 watt, you know, enclosed transformers that you can mount on the top of a chassis. And so they're just not even really in the mix. And I haven't built a product yet with ham and output transformers, but a lot of people say that they're pretty decent and probably about the same quality as these Ed cores and you can get them in stock at Mauser and plenty of other places. So that's a bonus for them. A new one that I want to try, and I bought a pair of really small push-pull output transformers. These are the Thermactic Labs, and these are 
the transformers that I'm going to use on my 6P1 push-pull conversion along with this Hammond power transformer to make like a, you know, a super 6P1. So that's a later project, but I got these ordered and they were, I thought, a reasonable price. They're nice, compact. They'll fit right on the top of that little, you know, 6P1 chassis and they're rated at 10 watts, 10K with ultralinear taps. So those should work ideal. And I want to give a shout out to them. Somebody at their company reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and offered to mail me a couple of output transformers for free to use on the channel in a build for you guys. And so they're sending me a couple of big single-ended output transformers to do on a build that may get pushed up further in the queue and it's something I've wanted to do for a while. There's a lot of people that have showed how to build KT88 single ended amplifiers that put out about 10 watts. And while that's good for a lot of speakers, there are a lot of speakers out there that that's just not quite enough. And so something like an SD35 or a EL84 push-pull amp that puts out 14 to 15 watts gets you over that line where now you've got enough power to drive those speakers. But then you're not listening to single ended anymore, which I really prefer the way those sound. So enter, we are going to build some KT120 single ended monoblocks. And, you know, got some KT88s that we've used on other projects, but got a set of these KT120s they really need a dedicated amp. You can't just stick them into a KT88 amp. They need to be biased more. The heaters take a lot more current and they draw a lot more current to really be in their correct operating zone. And then the output transformers need to be gapped for the current that's going to be running through these so they don't get magnetized. And they're special building these output transformers to work with KT120 tubes. And so I'm expecting these to be 14 to 15 watt single-ended monoblocks, which should push in almost any speaker out there. And so I think this is going to be really fun. Again, I want to thank the folks at Thermactic Labs for making me this offer to send me some output transformers to use on my channel. And like I said, I think I'm going to push that ahead of some of my other projects because I think that's something that a lot of people could benefit from is having a high-powered single-ended amp. And finally this week I want to highlight these DIY 2.2a speakers that we did a build series on. The reason we're highlighting them again on the channel, they are on sale. They're under $200 right now. And I mean I think it's 20% off. So guys if you were even thinking about wanting to do a DIY speaker build, especially if you need some speakers that are fairly efficient. These aren't like clips efficient, but like my EL34 single-ended amp doesn't have any problem driving them. That gives you some idea. So if you're looking for some fairly efficient DIY speakers for under a couple hundred bucks that sound really good, link below, click on it, go buy some of those, and you'll really enjoy it. I promise. So again, I know some of the content's been a little slower right now. I've been working on an R8 that I discovered the volume control problems with, so that was a good thing to be doing another one of those. Doubt I'm really going to get into doing a lot of mod for customers' amps on those things. It takes a lot of time, and I didn't realize, you know, I thought, well, maybe that I've done one of these, it'll be a lot quicker on the second one. Replacing all those resistors just takes forever. I mean, I probably spent add up all the hours and you know across several days that I worked on I probably spent 30 hours working on that thing and trying to charge people enough money to really make it worthwhile for me is just kind of I think getting to be more than the amps worth and so you know I'll, I'll quote people on that if somebody really wants to send me another one I'm not going to do any kind of rush jobs they'll need to be left with me for a couple of months and it's probably going to be about 450 labor plus 250 in parts plus the shipping, which is about $125 each way. So it's not a cheap proposition, but 
Some of you guys want to upgrade an R8 and you aren't able to do it yourself and you don't mind waiting, shoot me an email at my website and we'll try to you know work you into the queue. But it kind of slows down my video production, so I don't want to do too much of that stuff. I got to fix my 300 B amp. So hopefully, had a little vacation last week. So hopefully next week we can get back to doing the preamp that's in the hopper. Maybe by then we'll have the Apple transformers for the KT120 amp. I'm going to start kind of doing the layout, ordering chassis. And if somebody has a good idea on a quality chassis that's not super expensive, please leave some notes in a web link or email me the web link so that I can look at some different chassis. I know about landfall systems. They're pretty expensive. I don't really know if I want to spend two or $300 each on just a chassis. And I kind of would like a step up from these little steel powder-coated Hammond chassis, but that may be what I end up using just because there's not a whole lot of other options out there. So if anybody's got some ideas on that, send me a link. Or maybe even some ideas on some DIY solutions that might be fun to try. So, anyway, hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. Also, if you'd like to support these projects that I'm doing, there's a Patreon. There's a donate page at my website. I'll put the link below. Especially if you found some tips and tricks that you've used on your own amps or followed along and built something, I'd appreciate a little donation just to kind of keep things rolling. So I think that's it. Till the next Monday Monologue.